Shane from Performance EV. Welcome to our latest video. Today we're going to look at the test rig that we've got created in order to be able to try and run the inverter on its own. So I finally got my workspace back um, thanks to putting some of the <laughs> parts that were in the middle of the way into the Porsche at least temporarily. So I wanted to get things set up so I can continue trying to get this inverter working on its own. Um, still got a little bit more work to do, but I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing, the direction I'm heading with it, um, just so you can see where we're, where we're planning to go with this. So here's our current test setup. I'll take you through each of the components and what we're doing. So of course, I'm going to look at these all together. Basically, we've got our laptop and the Arduino CAN uh, boards. So for sending and messages and for monitoring what's going on. Then we've got the inverter itself. Still hooked up to a few different things. We've got the motor, which I have actually wired up to the inverter now. So the three phases going to the three phases on the motor. Um, that's the VCU, it's not actually doing anything, it's just sitting there. Then we've got three batteries at the moment. We won't be using three batteries in the car, but it's just easier for manual control. So we've got one to give 12 volt power to the inverter, one to give 12 volt power to the relay that delivers the positive DC current and one to give 12 volt power to the contactor that gives the negative current. Now in order to keep the circuit simple I'm actually just going to run the power through the um, pre-charge relay at the moment. This is just uh, so one less thing that I need to switch on. I still have the um, battery op or the software operated um, relays for controlling all this, but uh, for the moment I just want to be able to control things manually while we're doing testing. Then behind this we've got a bank of 12 12 volt mobility batteries. So these are wired together in series with little kind of mini bus bar type things in between them. So these are 12 volt batteries individually, there are 12 of them which gives us 144 volts. That is then wired up with our positive going through the pre-charge circuit to the positive on the capacitor and the negative going through the high voltage relay or contactor to the negative on the capacitor. I've got a multimeter wired up to the um, capacitor just so I can see what current, what voltage it's getting to. And then we have our um, wiring plugged into the inverter itself. So what are we going to do? Um, so obviously there's a few different things that have to happen. In order for us to be able to send messages to control the inverter, the inverter obviously has to be switched on. Um, so we do that by running power through this battery. That then needs a couple of things to happen in relatively quick succession. So we need to start then sending the inverter messages that it can accept. Um, so we're doing using one of the um, Arduinos to send out some messages at the rate that it expects them. So it no, thinks it's in a car. Then beyond that, um, we also need to get the capacitor up to voltage. So from what I've seen online, the minimum that it needs to get up to is 144 volts. So we're sending through the power to do that. And that needs to happen within 10 seconds of the inverter switching on. Um, it doesn't take too long. It happens in probably just under a second. So it's, um, that's not a problem as long as I can get the negative and positive switched on in time. 
So on the laptop, we've got one of the Arduinos running a, a very basic program just to receive the CAN messages coming across. And if we send power to the inverter, it will start sending those messages across. So then we need to start sending our own messages, which I do by switching on the other Arduino, and that will then start to send messages in series with it. Then we need to run power to the inverter, so we're sending the negative and switching on then the positive. And that then sends the current in the capacitor up to over 140 volts. And that's when, with some new software, we'll eventually be able to send a message to the inverter telling it to send power through the motor. So thanks for joining us for that brief video. I hope it gave you some idea of what we're trying to do. Um, still have a little bit of a way to go with the software, basic though it is, for controlling the inverter. Uh, just about getting the timings of some of the messages right so that the inverter doesn't freak out. Um, we're getting there, but uh, it's still going to be another another little while before I actually have something to show for all this. But yeah, I hope you uh, got something out of today's video. If you have, please like, share, subscribe, um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.